Hey folks, welcome to Build Fly Go. So it's been a while since we've done a time-lapse video. We've decided to speed this one up considerably so it doesn't go on forever. Um, we This time-lapse is from when we've moved to the pegboard. You'll see the pegboard right there um, with all of the markings for the different branches of the circuit. So each different device, each different connectors on there. And we go all the way to the point where the wiring harness is complete on the pegboard without the connectors on them and we pull it off the pegboard and basically place it into the uh, sub sub panel firewall structure <laughs> um, so it's the it's the structure that has the sub panel the top skin and in our case the panel as well uh, goes right there so it's we have uh, about 12, 13 minutes here of, of doing this really quickly. Um, you'll notice we'll go from beginning to end. You'll see a lot of points where I'm looking at documentation, a couple of pauses where we're uh, documenting what we do. Please check out my other videos on how we are documenting and how we designed um, sort of made decisions on serial ports and discretes on where things are going to go and, and things like that. Uh, there's, there's a lot to this, but I think the big message here is it's totally doable. Um, I have done one of these before, uh, not even this extensive on our RV9. I did a good chunk of the RV9 uh, wiring. Um, I did a lot of the RV9 design. But this is the first time that we're doing sort of end-to-end -end and... I'm not an avionics guy, right? I'm I'm just uh, an airplane builder, and uh, <laughs> and this stuff is not hard. It's it's another skill. It's just like building an airplane, right? Like you start building an airplane, you've never done that before. You've never done metal work before, or most of us have never done that before, and uh, you you figure it out. You learn as you go along. The Garmin documentation is fantastic, so do take a look at that. Uh, the Garmin G3X documentation um, is on the Garmin website. It's a lot of pages uh, because it covers all of their components. And I've had a couple of people ask me, you know, do I have to read all of that? Um, I think the, the answer is not do you have to or do you not have to, it's you want to, right? Uh, because that is going to give you the deepest understanding of the avionics in your aircraft that, that you can get. So even if you are having... Um, a shop do your wiring, read the Garmin installation manual because it's going to tell you all about the different discretes. It's going to tell you all about the different configuration options. You're going to understand your system significantly better. So in the future, if you're thinking about upgrades um, or thinking about adding components, you know what's already in there. You know what, what's going to be required, what's going to work, what's not going to work. Um, if you ever have to troubleshoot something, right? Like these are, these are airplanes there, you know, there's, there's going to be maintenance. There's going to be troubleshooting in the future. Um, but if you have to troubleshoot something, be it on the ground or in the air, <laughs> um, having that understanding of your system is going to be the difference between, um, having to land to, to figure something out versus, um, if you know what the issue is and it's not something that's a big deal, you can continue to your destination and sort it out, sort it out on the ground there. Or um, if it's something that happens on the ground, the difference between you being able to resolve it and having to uh, pay someone to fix it, right? Like and having the airplane grounded for a, possibly a long time while um, an avionics shop, uh, you know, finds time in their schedule to help you out. So if you understand the system, if you if you understand in depth the system you are much better prepared as an aviator and as an aircraft owner to, uh, to, to own that aircraft, right? To do the maintenance, to do the, 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 the troubleshooting, to do the upgrades and all that kind of stuff. It's not that you have to be the one doing that, but it puts you in a much, much better position. So that was my rant about read the manual. <laughs> the Garmin manuals are fantastic. Um, and if you do uh, have a third party shop, uh, do your harness, they will prepare further documentation for you, wiring diagrams, things like that, that also help you, um, you know, sort all this out. Uh, the better shops out there will work with you to figure out the, you know, what the serial ports are and why and, you know, things like that. Um, of course, if you want them to, uh, I understand a lot of people just want someone to do it for them and that's 
perfectly okay as well. So for us, you know, we have uh, <laughs> dug into these manuals quite extensively. You'll see I have uh, wiring sheets and wiring diagrams in front of me the entire time. Um, and I do everything based off of those manuals. So I am highlighting, you see the, the highlighters on the desk right next to me. There's a green, uh, a yellow, and a blue. Um, the green I use for, I am marking on all of the, the wiring sheets, the breakdowns, I mark which wires, before I do it, I mark which wires we're going to pin, which ones are going to be used so that it makes this part easier, right? So I'm not hunting for, okay, what do we need? Why do I need that, right? Like figuring that out on the spot. We, we went ahead and did that ahead of time. And as we are doing the wiring, I take the yellow, uh, yellow highlighter and I highlight over the green um, it, you can see it, <laughs> to indicate that it has been done. And then when we come back later, I can look at it and say, oh, okay, we've actually done all of these, right? Like, and, and you can keep track of it. Um, I also write, you see the little red pen there, that's just a regular ball po ballpoint pen. Um, I am also, uh, later on, not right now, uh, I write on that wiring sheet for multi-conductor wires, I will write, you know, uh, white, blue, orange, right? Like in, in order uh, <laughs> on the on the sheet so that I know, oh, the white is the TX on this side, um, the blue is the RX on this side, and the orange is the ground on this side, for example. So keeping organized, of course, is, is key here. <laughs> there, there are a lot of wires. I should, we should count these. We should figure out how many there are. Um, there was, we definitely bought uh, a lot of wire. Um, a lot of the, the the good avionics shops will sell you a wiring kit that includes just spools and spools of wire that they believe that you're going to need. Um, or you can, you know, as part of your design for, for the aircraft, right, you know the lengths, right, because you have to figure out all of the lengths, um, roughly. Uh, you can just add all those up, and that's what we did. We, we figured out the length between the components, we added all of those up, and then we placed an order uh, for wire with one of the wire distributors. Um, so, which is why we have so many spools of, of, of wire. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so, and then later on, much later in the next time lapse, you're gonna see when we're pinning things, uh, and that's when I use the, the other color um, highlighter to indicate that this has been pinned. Of course, we are also super cautious about uh, the grounds and the power pins, right? That's the, that's the main part, the most, um, I'm not going to say the most likely, but definitely the, the, the one place where you can actually damage a component if you apply power to the wrong pin. <laughs> that's basically the, where you can damage something. So we're super cautious about where are all the power pins, where are all the power wires going, and we triple check, right? Like, um, I'm doing all the pinning, and then I have Mary check all of the, all of those, uh, each component, each connector that has a power pin, I have her check the power pin, make sure it's right, and then before closing everything out, I look at it one last time and make sure that, that it is, you know, in the right spot. But yes, so you see, as I've talked, right, like we're halfway through this at this point, and that has really grown. It's it's pretty thick. You'll see that we're using, I believe those are dollar store uh, hair, hair clamps, uh, hair, hair, uh, hair tie clamps. Um, and they've been great for organizing the wires and not uh, going through thousands of zip ties. Um, later on, we do shift to zip ties. We decided to use zip ties instead of uh, wire lacing um, for n no real reason. Um, I'm, I've done some wire lacing. It's fine. I find that it takes a little longer. Uh, the wire lacing, um, some people believe it looks a lot better. Um, I'm, you know, like I, I have no... <laughs> Uh, I have no dog in that, um, if you will. Uh, I believe uh, it does look nice. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily uh, better or worse. Anyway, so uh, zip ties are easy. <laughs> zip ties are quick and easy. Um, here we are. So uh, a lot of wiring going in. You'll see that there's big bundles off of the left side of the harness and the right side. Those bundles are the ones that are going to go down the fuselage either to the back of the airplane where there is um, power or uh, the transponder is back there. Uh, the, uh, 
the oxygen cylinder is back there with the regulator and the uh, ELT is back there, or wires going forward are also sort of mixed up in that mess there. It's not that messy, it's coiled up nicely. Uh, mixed up over there, and the wires going forward, firewall forward, would be sensors, um, really mostly sensors, right? Like the sensors and the uh, Stardust solenoid and um, things like that. CHT, EGT, pressure, temperature, um, all of those go forward. But, um, and uh, you can see now we've, we've sort of completed, or we believe we've completed laying out all the wires. And you can see Mary is Mary's really good at this. You'll notice that she has actually been the one laying out most of the wires because she, uh, her organization, her sense of, of where to place things is so much better than mine. Um, and now we're cleaning things up. You'll see that we're we're adding twisty ties. Um, you know, we're checking uh, that the the wires are going to the right place. Um, so I'm looking at the thing, and she's calling out what's in each one. And we're using twisty ties to sort of tighten up the the bundles and clean everything up. This is the sort of the first step before we move to zip ties. I don't actually think we move to, to zip ties until later when the, the panel is on the aircraft. But you see the, the mess is really starting to clean up now. It's really starting to look like a, you know, a pretty wire bundle. Um, and it's going to tighten up, right? Like you see there's the loops coming off of the, the sort of the main, I guess, you know, length along horizontal length of the, the bundle. And those are all going to tighten up as, as we go. But it's, 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 you know, it goes from being sort of this messy thing to this really sort of pretty, like, oh, this looks like a, a nice wiring bundle. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, look at that. She's like combing all the wires out. This is super important, at least for it to look nice. Um, and to make it easier to, to, to service later is, comb out the wire so they're not sort of crisscrossing each other uh, in the bundle. Um, that makes it really hard for you to later to, to, oh, I need to change this wire out for this different one, which does happen, right? Like later on, as I'm pinning things, I discovered that I ran um, two individual wires and I really needed to run a three conductor uh, for something. Um, and we'll talk about that later, things that you discover as you go. But yeah, so this is it. Thanks so much for watching. There is more coming, and uh, as as usual, we'll we'll see you out there. Have a good one.